if you couldn't tell by now, we really like to travel. <laughs> And we really miss it. It's been, you know, a while since we've been able to really go on a big adventure. Which leads us to one of the questions that we're often asked. How do you guys plan your trips? Stay tuned. We'll show you our process and hopefully it's helpful. Welcome to A Brow with the Brails, a channel for travelers by travelers. I'm Coleman. And I'm Jamie. Let the record show off the bat that if you're going to be booking for a resort, and we love resorts and we travel to them, it is a lot easier. There are not nearly as many moving parts compared to booking in a major city or a location that's a little bit off the beaten path. So if you are ready to venture out, do something with a little more complexity. <laughs> Here's a video for you. When it comes to planning and booking a trip, there are major things you wanna take into consideration. Through trial and error, we have found what really works for us and to give us the most success when it comes to our trips. The first thing you wanna book before anything else is your flight. Figure out where you wanna go. Are you gonna to go to multiple locations? Are you gonna be just in one location? Get that flight locked in. We say flight first because there can be huge fluctuation in the cost, even just a matter of two days difference. First, try to narrow down a time range in which you can travel, maybe like a month period if you have the flexibility. The reason why you leave a month open to plan is because flight prices are extremely volatile. Literally from Tuesday to Thursday, you can find such a drastic difference in prices. So we recommend leaving yourself about a month so you can tinker around with various prices, enter in different dates through various weeks, and find the best price possible within that time range. We highly recommend you do not book your lodgings first. This is very tempting to do, but doing this pigeonholes your ability to find and play around with different flight prices. If you get your hotel and Airbnb first, then that locks in when you can look for a flight and you may get stuck with an expensive one. Hotels and Airbnb prices are a lot more fixed. So once you play around with flight dates and find a good one, then you can pair your hotel and Airbnb to the great flight prices that you found when you were tinkering around and looking for a good one. We've saved a lot of money with this approach. You will notice that summer months tend to cost more money because people want to go out when the weather's nice. If your schedule allows you to book something in the fall or spring, that is actually a really good time. Once you know when you can take your vacation, book your flight. A couple things to consider the time of year you're going. Is it going to be colder weather, hotter weather? Are there any special events you're looking forward to? Maybe you've always wanted to do Oktoberfest in Germany. Maybe you want to see the Cherry Blossom Festival in Japan. When do you Maybe want to Maybe you go? want to see the Cheese Festival in Switzerland. Last day here in Switzerland, and it just happens to be the Cheese Festival. Open air fondue. Bubbly, bubbly. <laughs> Only at the, the cheese festival. <laughs> or for example, when we were in England, one of our favorite shows is Downton Abbey. And so we're like, wait, the castle's there in England. While we're there, we have to go see Highclere Castle where they filmed it. After looking it up, doing a little research, we realized that the castle itself is only open to visitors 60 days out of the year. If anything like that appeals to you, try to fit your vacation around the time that those things are happening. This is something that we have had to experiment with a little bit. So we've had trips where we've moved a lot, you know, maybe two nights here, one night here, three nights here. And we've had trips where we've stayed in one place for 11 days at a time. We have found through our experience that it is better to not move too much. So much better. Okay. If you are constantly packing up, transporting to the next location, it takes a lot of your vacation time. One of our favorite trips ever was when we did 11 days in Hong Kong. We didn't go anywhere else. We were in Hong Kong the whole time. 
same hotel. And it really allowed us that flexibility to go out, have a meal, go back and lay down and take a nap if we wanted to. We were able to really soak in the culture because we had the time to just sit and people watch and interact with the locals. So it's our first day in Hong Kong. Just past the Avenue of Stars. Mm -hmm. Baby in tow. Baby in tow. Where are we off to now? Um, perhaps we will grab a bite to eat. All right. Cool. Okay, honey, what are you about to try? Pork bun. That is a giant pork bun. Mm -hmm. What's that one? Then? This is a shrimp and shark fin number. So we're walking around and we're trying to get to this foot locker right there. <laughs> but <laughs> everywhere we go, the signs say, please do not cross here. We are determined to get to the Foot Locker. All the way to Hong Kong. <laughs> to go to Foot Locker. Hey. <laughs> All right, so we are walking through the maze garden. Will we find our way out? Huh, which way? Right, left, or straight? That's a dead end. Let's go left. To the left, to the left. We shall see where this takes us. Right. <laughs> Will the stroller fit? <laughs> Not very stroller friendly. <laughs> Ooh, we made it. Woo it was a great mix between having an itinerary, but at the same time being completely relaxed and leisurely while doing it, taking in all of the city to its fullest potential. You can move definitely and do multiple locations. Just know that it does become a little bit more tedious. When we were in Scotland, we did a few days in Edinburgh, then we rented a car, we drove up to Inverness, and then we actually drove out to the Isle of Skye and stayed in Portree. So we did hit three locations in about a week's time, but because we rented a car, we were able to see a lot of the country. The adventure begins driving through Scotland. What are you doing? Shifting with my dang left hand, this is weird. So weird. This is crazy. And driving on the wrong side of the road. And driving on the wrong this side of the road. This is gonna be an adventure. Abroad with the Burrells. Oh, uh, look, I'm turning on windshield <laughs> wipers and everything. All right. Here we and go. And we're off, drapesing around Scotland. It's the craziest place in the world. <laughs> Do you know where you're going? Going for a wee tram. Do you remember That's to stay on the left? Accent. So it was more movement but it was worth it in that case. So just considering your options, what you actually really want to see. There are a ton of sites out there to book through. We have found a couple that work for us really well. And so if it ain't broke, we're just going to keep doing it. One of our favorite sites to use is tripmasters.com. I want to show you why we like this site so much. So say we're going to Paris. Say we want to go uh, maybe right when school's out. Maybe we want to do five nights in Paris. Now, if you want to add another location right here, you just add a destination. So from Paris, maybe we want to go to London. How many nights do we want to spend there? We'll say three nights. You can continue adding as many destinations as you want. But for sake of the video, we'll just stop right there. So you would hit next. If you want to spice things up a little bit, change your cabin class. How many people? Okay, if it's just Coleman and I. They do have the COVID-19 information here. So you want to definitely check that out. So here you'll see your flights. 
If you don't like this flight, you can always browse other flights. They also offer you a specific hotel because we had hotel listed on there. What's cool about this, going in between Paris and London, they include an inner city transfer. So you don't have to worry about figuring out how to get from Paris to London. They put the train schedule right in here for you. They also recommended a London hotel and that was all the things that we specified. Definitely check out the reviews for each hotel. If you are not pleased with this, you can always browse the other hotels there. Now, what my favorite feature is, is the fact that it allows you to compare between days. Maybe your schedule's a little flexible and you don't have to leave on Tuesday. Let's see what happens if we leave that Wednesday instead. You'll notice that it does compare. It keeps that Tuesday price there and actually tells you that Tuesday would be $12.40 more expensive. Now, what I like to do is actually click on each tab and just have an idea. If my schedule allows us to leave maybe four days earlier, why not if it's a better deal? So let's take a peek. We have found in some cases, leaving between a Monday and a Tuesday, for example, could literally be the difference of like $1,500. So it is really cool to have this feature to be able to see that comparison. So here you'll notice if you were to leave Monday, it's $4,000. So 2000 each. Okay. So it was a difference of $86. So that's something to consider. It adds up. So you can actually compare all the days. Let's just do one more just to get an idea. So here it's even more expensive. So maybe you were considering leaving Sunday at first, $4,100. Looking at Wednesday, it's $3,900. So you're saving $228 if you can leave three days later. So just little things like that. I also want to bring your attention to this 800 number up here. We have booked through the site just as is without calling for help, but we have actually benefited significantly when we have called for help. For example, when we were going to Italy, there was no way for me to mark that Brooklyn was an infant. They only let me choose two years and older and she was only eight months. And so when I called them, they were able to tack her on to our trip. Also, the agents really want to help you out. Every experience has been amazing. They have flights and hotels on their end that we don't necessarily see as your average consumer. So if you call them, you tell them what you're looking for, they work their magic to find you the best deals. And we are not in any way affiliated with this site. It has truly just been nothing but helpful. So we do want to give credit where credit's due. Italy had a lot of moving parts during our trip and Brooklyn was a baby. I didn't want to deal with a lot of that planning. Came on here, told them what we wanted. They emailed us several different itineraries and we were able to pick the best one. So definitely utilize this number. You will not regret it. Another site that just seems to give us the best deals when we do our comparing is Travelocity. No, it's pretty mainstream, but it works for us. And we've tried booking things on other sites. When we go back to Travelocity, it always seems to be cheaper. So we just stick with it. We also use an app called Hopper. Hopper allows you to enter your destination and then it will actually tell you, yes, book now. The price is not gonna get any better or wait, we'll tell you when prices get better. And so that's kind of cool. It gives you notifications when the prices drop. So you can be watching a trip in advance to see when the best time is to book. After you have that flight locked in, now would be the time to book your hotel. Couple things to consider. Okay, figure out what part of the city you want to stay in. We find ourselves most comfortable staying somewhere in the city center. Now it could be more costly, but it just makes sense because it saves us a ton of time. For example, when we went to New York, we really wanted to stay in Harlem. We had heard so much about the culture, but what ended up happening was a lot of the things we wanted to see were in Manhattan. So every day had to get on the subway, 
go across the whole city to get to where we wanted to go. So doing that every day can be a bit exhausting. Mm -hmm. It would have made more sense for us to stay in Manhattan, in Manhattan. near the things that we wanted to see, right. right? So that's something to consider. Sometimes it really does pay to stay out somewhere a little more remote, a little quaint, depending on what you're looking for but we found it to be way more convenient staying in the heart of the city. So if you're going to Paris, if the Eiffel Tower is the number one thing on your list, you might wanna stay somewhere near there. In our opinion, the little bit of extra money that you're gonna spend is absolutely worth the time that you're going to save. Remember, vacation time is limited, and you want as much time as you can to do the things that you enjoy. Even if you are staying in the city center, it still is possible to take a day trip somewhere if that's on your itinerary. But where are you gonna find the most convenience in terms of, you The know, majority of your trip. Right. Wherever you decide to stay, we recommend reading as many hotel reviews as possible. Stay somewhere that you know, you feel overall very comfortable with. It's gonna be your home for that time. Transportation. When you get to your location, how are you gonna get around? You can take the metro, you can take the bus. If you're going to multiple locations, are you gonna get there by train? Short plane ride? Rent a car? What is your plan? Now, as you're exploring the city, we often like to walk. You can also rent a bike. So there's just several modes of transportation to consider. You should really take advantage of the Metro when you are overseas somewhere. Now, if you are going between major cities or major locations, a train is a really popular way to go. You might even find a short plane ride to be best. Or another option is to rent a car. When we were in Switzerland, we rented a car to drive into France. When we were in Scotland, like I mentioned earlier, we drove all around the island basically yeah, to get from location to location. Now the benefit of that was really being able to see the Scottish countryside. I can't tell you how many times we pulled over just to get out and take pictures or get the drone up or we had to stop because there were sheep crossing the road, okay? Yeah. Those are moments and memories that you cannot get anywhere else. Right. So renting a car definitely has its advantages. And so just figuring out those moving parts right. and how you're gonna get to where you need to go. You can figure that out by actually just Googling best way to get from city to city. Activities and attractions. Again, through trial and error, we have wasted a lot of time standing in line to buy yeah. tickets. Figured out later in our travels, you can buy all your tickets yep. in advance online. And that way, when you get to these locations, you're in the door. And guys, once we learned this, there was no turning back. Being able to skip the front of the line every time at every attraction, especially in the middle of the summer when it's jam packed. And hot. And hot, it's one of the best feelings ever. All right, honey, good job. And we're in, quick and easy. And it just saved us so much A ton time. of time. Highly recommend buy your tickets Highly ahead of time. Highly recommend. You also want to make sure that you're buying tickets from a trusted website. Yes. You can actually get there usually through the country's... Like tourism it? Yeah, the sites. country's tourism sites, right. okay? We also want to point out to do your research, what is there to see there? My very first trip abroad was to Barcelona. It was my very first trip. I didn't do much research, so I did not nearly take advantage of that. There are so many things I could have seen that I didn't even know existed. So look up, what is the city known for? What must I see? It is so important that you do that. Now you're looking at a monument or a building or a site and it means so much more when you understand the context and the history behind what you're looking at and experiencing. So we're in the Great Theater in Ephesus right now. Mm. This was a major city for idolatry, obviously, and the Temple of Diana was here, Temple of Artemis, one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. In Acts chapter 19, the Bible says that they gathered here and screamed for two hours 
great is Diana of the Ephesians. After Apostle Paul was teaching, this is the very theater where Gaius and Alexander and Aristarchus were dragged here and subjected to persecution. It's amazing just incredible being here in this spot that we've read about and studied in Acts for so many years. Um, the Bible says that Paul tried to come in here, obviously, and be here with his companions, but they wouldn't let him come into this place. But When I got home from that Barcelona trip, a few friends of mine were like, oh, did you go see that? Did you go see that? Did you go see that? I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> shoot. I was over there halfway across the world and didn't see some of the most important things. So make sure you go there with intention, knowing what you want to see. Now with that, we recommend traveling with a loose itinerary, knowing what things you want to see, but allowing yourselves time to just wander yes. and explore, yes. giving yourself time to go take a two hour lunch at a cafe. Don't book boom, boom, boom things that you have to get to right away. You want to give yourself time to just enjoy the culture. Yes. Okay, that's a huge part of traveling. First day in Venice and uh, we'll be searching for some food and over to San Marco Square later. Let's go. So yeah, boy. First pasta dish in Venezia. Yummy. Sienna. It's pretty great. Sienna. Piazza del Campo, enjoying the sunset. Great. Not a complaint in the world. Just hanging out in the piazza. Piazza del Campo. Oh, Brooklyn's here too. Say hi. Say ciao. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Yep, this is the great thing about the piazza is uh, a lot of people just come out and hang. Enjoy the evening. Ciao, bella. Ciao, bella. Bellissimo. You're on vacation. The last place you want to be skimping dollars is when you're on vacation. Yes, we all like deals and we like to get things at a bargain. And you'll get those things sometimes. And sometimes you'll be able to, you'll be able to haggle those things. But other times, you're just going to have to pay the price if you want a great experience. I'm not saying you gotta go out there and do top rate everything, but sometimes it is a nice treat at the end of a long day to have a nice dinner with your SO. Sometimes it is nice to pay the money to go in to see that monument or to have that tour guide so that you can have a richer knowledge of what you're looking at. And always use the non-dominant hand. Three fingers from the stem, pick it up, mm. pass it to your right hand. Three fingers on the bottom, index and thumb like this mm. then if you want to be professionally you hold it like this mm. now you should feel the glass more stable into your hand compared to when you hold it like this you feel that uh, the the balance is better so now let's smell the wine as we usually do now try put mouth and lips you feel a, a little bit more flavor maybe a generic fluidity flavor but you cannot tell the flavors correct Absolutely normal because it needs to breathe like the red wine. Now let's start swirling the wine for 10 seconds. Mm. Don't be shy with the glass. Great job. You too. <laughs> Absolutely. Great there. <laughs> so yes, we like the bargains, but some things are worth paying for. Call your banks ahead of time. Let them know you are going to be out of the country or maybe in another state so that when you use your card, they don't shut down your card because they think it's been stolen. Most countries nowadays do take credit card. However, we still recommend bringing some cash on you so that you can exchange. When we were in Hong Kong, we found a lot of places did not accept credit card. So always keep some cash on you, although in most locations you'll be fine with your credit card. It never hurts to be prepared. And last but not least, guys, go in understanding this, that even the best laid plans <laughs> come with snags. Yep. There are times when things just don't go like you plan it, no matter how meticulously you try to prepare. 
And in those cases, try to keep your frustration at a minimum. Try to keep a good attitude and understand that you're on vacation. And what we've noticed is even in those moments, within an hour or two, you're back on cloud nine, mm -hmm. realizing that, hey, we're, we're having the experience of a lifetime right now. We want to help you however we can. If there's anything we left out that you're still a little bit more curious about, please feel free to ask and we'll respond as soon as possible. So that's gonna do it for us, the Burrells. Hopefully uh, we were able to help you and aid you in your process. If you heard anything that was informational or helpful or inspirational in any way, hit the like button, hit the subscribe, share the video, click the bell for notifications, all that good stuff. And remember guys, traveling is not just about the destination, but of course, who you share it with. Get your butts out there, make it happen. And have fun. Have fun guys, plan well and have a good time. Hope to see ya.